Hi, Ms. Seglin here with Middle School Art Appreciation, and this is Early 20th Century Art in the Americas, Topic 17. Okay, so this first painting is a George Bellows um, painting called A Morning Snow, Hudson River, which is in New York, um, and, you know, it's showing us the you know, that it's cold, that it's the morning, you know, it, there's kind of, uh, not a whole lot of colors are used, but the question's asking, you know, how do you know this is a modern painting? So, you know, look back here, you know, what types of things do we have showing us that this is in more modern times? Okay, so of course, photography has been invented and is getting to be widespread. That changes art on a huge scale. Artists no longer have to, you know, reproduce reality for prosperity. Now they can express themselves as they want to and art has you know changed massively ever since okay so in the u.s and canada uh, one of the schools that started was called the ash can school and this was just what people were calling it probably not in a really nice way but you know they're showing city life the tenement buildings are very poor apartments that people were forced to live in, crowded city streets, um, people who, you know, worked all the time that still didn't have any money, kids who were ragged and dirty, you know, walking around. This is what is going on in these cities, and the artists were reproducing this, okay? Was it always pretty? No. You know, some of the images, um, you know, are disturbing, and, you know, if you look at this, Dust Storm Fifth Avenue by John Sloan. You know, look at all the things going on there. You know, there's a car. People seem like they're running for their lives. You know, they're kind of terrified. We have this dark, shadowy figure. You know, there's this huge, massive, scary, you know, storm cloud approaching. You know, not a very pleasant, uh, you know, painting here. And that's the Ash Can School. Okay, it's not an ash can would be a can where you put your ashes in and it's very dirty, leaves smudges, you know, uh, not pretty. Okay, so early American modernism. This is a lot of city state uh, cityscapes, and the most famous painter here would definitely be Edward Hopper. Okay, and there was an earlier art critique of a of Hopper painting of a train. And the thing that stands out, you know, about Hopper, and this is early Sunday morning, extremely famous painting, you know, but do you see anybody in the painting? Let's make it a little bit bigger. You know, what do you see? What do the colors look like? Red and green, opposite on the color wheel. You know, we have this barber pole here. There's not a single person. Now, you know, there's people in these, you know, little apartments here, but nobody's coming out. What does that make you feel like? Lonely? Many of Hopper's paintings have that lonely, you know, type of feeling. Okay, the next artist is Stieglitz, and he was actually married to Georgia O'Keeffe. Um... Let's see the Stieglitz. I uh, don't even have a Stieglitz um, picture here, but Stieglitz promoted, you know, photography, and Georgia O'Keeffe too. And this is her Brooklyn Bridge, okay? Which this really isn't an iconic Georgia O'Keeffe. Usually, when we think of Georgia O'Keeffe. You know, we think about her huge um, flowers, and I'm actually going to run that through. You know, because we, we really don't think of her as painting bridges. Okay. 
you know, she did, you know, she went out west and, you know, did a lot of paintings out there. But usually we think of her for these, you know, huge flowers or these, you know, heads here. And Wikipedia is not the best website to use. get something a little this is Georgia O'Keefe right here this is what we think of when we think of Georgia O'Keefe okay these huge flowers blown up you know not as realistic as a photo but still realistic but also stylized you know look at the shapes look at the colors that is a Georgia O'Keefe and then to look up her husband He also, you know, had a lot of different images. Yeah, this would be something. You know, this canal. The, you know, this is what I think of when I think of a Stiglitz. You know, a photography scene at night. Close up of somebody's hands. You know, nature, some city life, people. But really, this is what I would think of. And, you know, he has that, um, the light and dark, you know, that contrast. And, you know, it kind of evokes, um, you know, a feeling in you. You know, kind of almost like a sad or haunted feeling. But also, you know, it shows the beauty of, of the natural world. Um, this is Emily Carr Reforestation from 1936. And... This is from a Canadian group of seven, and I cannot say I'm an expert on this group, but, you know, the colors are really interesting, you know, and the shapes, again, you don't see any people, um, but are really kind of an interesting style. Okay, and again, this is a Canadian um, shacks. Again, interesting. St I mean, look at that snow. It looks freezing there, you know, but you have the smoke coming out of the chimneys. The colors are really extraordinary here. You know, we have that red and green contrast again, you know, um, analogous colors, and, and the brushwork is pretty interesting too. Then we're moving on to, to architecture at this time, when of course we have the very famous. Frank Lloyd Wright um, around here. We're very lucky to have Falling Water, which is one of the most famous, um, you know, buildings in the world. And if you ever get a chance, you know, you have to go visit it. Um, I'll try to put some more pictures online um, if I can find them. They're somewhere on a computer. But Frank Lloyd Wright, you know, is one of the most famous um, architects in America. You know, and his style is called the prairie style, but th there's, and Falling Water is a perfect example of this, the connection between the house and nature. You know, in Falling Water, you have like a stream kind of going through the house, which is absolutely amazing. Okay. So these are different styles, you know, that were emerging during the first 50 years of the 1900s. Now we're going into region, regionism, and this is where, you know, Americans were really, again, starting to come into their own style, you know, not following that art in Europe. And actually, you can probably see this behind me. <laughs> I have a, a print of American Gothic. And... You know, you see this all the time. And actually, this is by Grant Wood, and I believe this is his um, sister and his dentist, but they're posing as an unmarried daughter and a father. Um, why the name American Gothic? Well, think back to Art of the Middle Ages. You know, this window is a Gothic-style window, Okay. And, you know, how would you describe these figures? Do they look like they're the life of the party? 
probably not, you know. She is a very, you know, plain outfit on with like this type of house coat slash apron. You know, he's wearing a very plain black um, coat here with his overalls and, you know, you have the barn in the back and you're thinking these people probably have a lot of work to do, you know. They might not be the life of the party, but yet these are the people who keep America going, working in the breadbasket, you know, on farms. And, and this is called regionism. So, you know, when it focuses on that regional scene, you know, the Midwest or even cities, and these artists all had a different style, but... You know, what was going on at this time? The Dust Bowl, the Great Depression. All of these things were affecting the artists because, you know, uh, people didn't want to be like Europeans anymore. You know, th there was uh, an individual American identity, you know, that was coming out. People wanted to be American. They did not want to keep following you know, the Europeans. Um, this painting right here, this is Thomas Hart Benton. Um, he did a lot of murals, and this was actually 1950. You know, there's a boy leaving the family farm, going off into his own, and you can see, I mean, the lines of this. This is not a realistic painting in the sense that, you know, the landscape is kind of manipulated you have movement you know Thomas Hart Benton proud of his roots you know and he has that unique style like you can look at one of his paintings and say oh that's a Thomas Hart Benton um quick look at this this painting here and uh, let's see what they say about this you know the painter is showing the contrast between the marchers and the riders. And what I think is interesting about this is just the sizing, you know, that these guys are so much bigger. You know, these people are just marching. You know, what does that say? Okay, but that is part of this um, type of thing. Okay. And then in photography, we have Dorothea Lang. And, you know, this is a guy on the bread line, which happened during the Great Depression. So many people were unemployed. There were not jobs. Businesses were going under. You know, people did not have enough to eat, and they had to wait in these, um, these bread lines. Now, this is not Dorothea Lang's most famous picture here. You know, because this is right here. This, okay, and, you know, she has her kids. She's in, you know, this is during the Great Depression. And let's just look at some other quick images. You know, I mean, look how dirty these people are. They're living in these tent cities. People lost their family farms. The Dust Bowl rolled in, which was a man-made disaster um, where farmers weren't able to rotate the land and they were clearing the prairies to make room for farmland and the top layer of soil um you know was eroded leaving the dust all over the earth you know the farms were failing and it just created you know the timing could not be worse because then this you know happened during the depression so all these people lost um you know their family farms to banks you know, if you ever get a chance, read The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. And, and you know, that kind of gives you more of a story. Okay, and again, is The Art of Mexico. Um, muralist is an artist who paints large murals, artworks directly onto walls and ceilings. And you've probably seen this even in downtown Greensburg. There are um, murals, you know, on some of the walls, which are pretty cool. And, you know, the most famous one 
I've never really heard of this Jose Clemente or Rizzoco, but uh, Diego Rivera, you know, was really influenced by ancient pre-Columbian Mexican art. And, you know, he painted all over the world. And again, this one is not one that I know. Um, but here's his wife, Frida uh, Kahlo, 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 and she did a lot of self-portrait. She was in a terrible accident on, I believe, a trolley when she was young, had lifelong physical problems, um, was not able to have children. Now, they had a pretty crazy relationship, which they've made movies out of. But again, she's going back to her Mexican roots, you know, and dressing, um, you know, like maybe they did in an earlier time. Okay. And let me see if I can find a better Diego Rivera painting. And again, please, you know, feel free to explore these artists, you know, because we're looking at one picture where, you know, they had tons. This is more of what I would think of with the Diego Rivera. So, and you know, they were into labor rights, the rights of the people, the workers, um, all of those things. And you can see the staircase here, you know, the horses and they're going back to, you know, their roots in Mexico. Okay. So definitely take some time to look him up. Okay, and thanks for watching. This is early 20th century art in America. Thank you.